<laughs> Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard of the World Famous Robert Niles from Theme Park Insider here. Hello. Hey, hey happy to be here. <laughs> and happy to have you here. If you haven't checked out his uh, um, website, Theme Park In Insider, it's in the link below, but you've probably seen plenty of things from him. So about Theme Park Insider, how did you get started in that? Do you run it by yourself? By the way, like, do you have other yeah, guests? Yeah, there? it's it's me. I've got a couple of, uh, you know, I've got some readers that pitch in and uh, help cover stuff for me uh, elsewhere around the world where I can't get to things. I'm based in Southern California. I'm an L.A. native. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but uh, mostly mostly it's it's the Robert show. I mean, and uh, as the name implies, I, I got started because I was in the business. I worked at Walt Disney World when I was in college and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just absolutely loved it. I, I was in Florida. I, I, you know, I was born in California. I grew up going to Disneyland, but, um, you know, got a job in uh, college out in Florida. And, uh, yeah, just uh, absolutely loved that. And then a few years later, after I was done, uh, Internet was just kind of firing up at that point. And mm -hmm. uh, I was getting involved with, uh, you know, some discussion groups on things. And I just said, hey, you know, this would be kind of cool. Start up a website. Yeah, you know, I was working in journalism and internet publishing at the time, and, and I just thought of this as kind of my uh, little sandbox playground. Mm -hmm. Check out things, just see how they go. Um, so I said I need a topic I know, and it was theme parks. So I, I started up, and we launched uh, almost 22 years ago now. I've been wow. A long time. See, that's insane because I'm 25, so that means you won't. <laughs> <There's> three. <laughs> that's almost my entire life. <laughs> If there were probably three-year-olds who could have coded the site better than I could have been, too. But uh, hey, we'll, we'll leave that. So you worked at Disney World when the college program, or you just, just happened to be? No, no. Actually, my uh, <laughs> funny story. My parents moved to Orlando while I was in college. Like, oh, um, nice. You know, Fun. This is, I'm ancient. This is like before cell phones. And <laughs> so they just... They just picked up and left. And I knew they were leaving, but I didn't know when they were leaving. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I just called their old number and it was like disconnected. I'm like, oh, well, I hope they <laughs> let me know, you know where they're at. I knew they were going to go to Orlando at some point. So, you know, a week or so later, they call me up. It's like, why haven't we heard from you? I'm like, well, because you, you moved and didn't tell me where you went. They're <laughs> like, I, I, guess, I guess we did that. Uh, but anyway, so that summer I went down and I was like, I got to get a job. I'll, I'll start at Disney World. And if I don't get hired there, I'll just, you know, go down the checklist of all the other theme parks. But you know, went in and just smiled a lot, and uh, they hired me, and I, I went to work at Mickey's Mart in Tomorrowland my first summer, and then moved over to Magic Kingdom West Attractions driving Tom Sawyer Island rafts the summer after Ooh, that. Ooh, that's fun. Just stuck around for about uh, five years doing various stuff with Disney. Wow. So did, did your parents move to Orlando because... They like theme parks, they're just like Orlando or just randomly chose uh, Orlando. They were up in Indianapolis at the time, and I think they just got sick of the weather. Um, wow. But uh, yeah, no, my oh, sister had wow. actually, her uh, high school, our high school marching band had gone down there for the uh, um, Citrus Bowl parade. And oh. you know, so that's in December, and it's beautiful and everything down there. And they were just like, why do we live in the Midwest again? Let's <laughs> just move to Florida. So, you know, <laughs> so the next, nice. uh, by the next fall, they'd uh, found a place and moved down. So happy they did because that started my theme park. Career. Yeah, like, wow, crazy how things happen like that. Mm -hmm. So then, so you never worked at Disneyland, just at Disney World. No, no. I mean, I know Disneyland like the back of my hand at this point. I mean, I, I like I feel like I grew up there and, and started going back a lot uh, when we moved back to California. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, no, I've never hmm. actually pulled an official shift at Disneyland. I've been backstage everywhere you can be backstage at Disneyland <laughs> for one various reason or another. I kind of feel like maybe I've worked there, mm -hmm. um, but officially, no. Wow. So since you worked at Disney World for five years, no Disneyland with the back of your hand, I feel like you would be one of the best people to ask, which one's your favorite? Favorite Disney park or favorite park overall? Um, sorry, actually, two questions. Which okay. one do you think is better, Disney World, Disney Land Resort, or Disney World? Since you know the both of them by the back of your hand, basically. Mm, I'm gonna be a Californian here, and I'm gonna rep Disneyland. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank uh, you. Got more attractions at Disneyland than you have in the two parks at Disneyland than you have at the four parks at Disney World. Yeah, um, that's crazy. 
yeah, they, great. There's some stuff I love at Disney World. Don't get me wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. I I love Flight of Passage. I think that's mm-hmm. a great attraction. Uh, but Pirates at Disneyland. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. You've got you know, all the good stuff like Galaxy's Edge. You've got Radiator Springs Racers, Cars mm-hmm. Land. Uh, World of Colors coming back. Phantasmic's way better at Disneyland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you want to go with the nostalgia thing, yeah, it's all, it's Walt's Park, but it's just, mm-hmm. uh, it's just a lot easier to get around and, and it's close to home. It is home for me. I yeah, know. exactly. So, yeah. So that one, I'm going Disneyland. A lot easier to get around is what I want to say but, because Disney World. Best park overall? Yeah. Which one's the best park overall? Don't tell any of the Disney peeps, but I'm going with Universal Orlando Islands of Adventure. Oh, yes! Oh, wow. The, uh, the one-two punch of Velocicoaster and Hagrid's right now, it, that mm-hmm. is stupid. Uh, there is nothing beating that. And then, yeah, oh, and we've got Amazing Adventure of Spider-Man is like mm-hmm. the third ride in the park. That was the best ride in the world for like 20 years, and now it's <laughs> number three in its own park? That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Islands is so stacked. That I mean, even the little kitty rides there are good stuff. I mean, Goose um, Landing looks fantastic. Yeah, Cat yeah. yeah. I, I, I just I have so much fun every time I walk into that park. It is is a great time, and the the way they've been improving it is just. I mean, Grant, I think when Disneyland gets Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, when they mm-hmm. get the Toontown done there, yeah, Disneyland's going to be back challenging, no question about it. But mm-hmm. right now, if I had to go to one theme park in the United States. I'm going to Islands of Adventure. Wow. See, and uh, two things. One, um, this Disneyland versus Disney World. You know, I was going to say with the park hopping, much easier to do that at Disneyland. Oh, you, know, just, you know, back and it's forth. It's basically just one park. I it mean, really you're is. Walk, you're walking yeah. across like this, uh, the length of a football field or something. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that I love about Disneyland, and this is also something I love about Universal Orlando, is you're mm-hmm. not in your car. You park yeah. your car, you forget about it. You just walk in between the two parks. You walk through downtown Disney. You walk through City Walk. Mm-hmm. You know, you're truly on vacation. You really are truly in a bubble. You're mm-hmm. not getting in your car, driving in traffic, going from park to park the way you got to do so often at Disney World. Or if you're not in your car, you're waiting for those buses, which is a pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disneyland all the way. Yeah, much like it's really it really makes the uh, in my opinion actually the the Max Pass or Genie Plus the yeah. uh, much more valuable because you can again stand in line for Splash Mountain and get something a, fa- a Genie a Lightning Lane for Guardians of the Galaxy and not just walk across. So it makes yeah. it I feel like much more valuable. You lose so much time going in between parks at Disney World that I mean mm-hmm. I'm at the point now where I'm not recommending that people get park hoppers if they're just coming to visit the park for like mm-hmm. a week or something yeah mm-hmm. sure if you're an annual pass holder you're just dropping in whatever sure yeah yeah it's on there you know go ahead and use it but for the most part at disney world when i'm in a park i just i tend to stay there and just mm-hmm. that's it um maybe maybe you can kind of run in between epcot and hollywood studios yeah it's actually because they have the skyline, the skyline there, yeah. there but um animal kingdom you're not going mm-hmm. anywhere else for the day. If you're <laughs> yeah. Just your park there. You're not going anyplace else. But Disneyland, California Adventure, it's one park. Especially because um those the uh, the second gate Disney World parks close earlier anyway. So if you you can try, you just have a couple hours before you have to leave yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Particularly, um. yeah, right. I mean, back in the day when you could park hop whenever. You didn't mm-hmm. have the, the, you had to wait till the afternoon thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot easier to just, you know, go rope drop, hit one thing over at studios and then head out and do the rest of the day someplace else. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that anymore. So why bother? Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I went to Disney World one time, only one time, and I was seven. So it was like a long mm-hmm. time ago. But at that time, I didn't know that Universal Orlando existed. So when I found out it existed, I was like, oh, wow, this is like a bucket list park. So I've never been. But hopefully this summer or soon I can get my butt to Islands of Adventure because I've always wanted to go to that park. I was like, that looks like the most beautiful park ever. And the coolest thing, it makes a, a great mix of rides for everyone who likes thrill or family friendly. It's like perfect with the lake in the middle. It looks yeah. gorgeous. I kind of wish they still had the boats running across the lake. I think they did that for like one summer. 
Oh, that'd be great. Or even like a show in the middle, like the world. Yeah, yeah. Just show. A, and just the nice thing about taking the boat across there was you just you had those that nice unique perspective from the middle of the lake that you can't get mm -hmm. anymore. But yeah, I yeah, I get it. I get it. But I'll Honestly, you get a really nice perspective in the middle of the lake on Velocicoaster, if you yeah. but you got to catch it quick because it doesn't last very long and you're upside oh, down yeah. for half of it. But um, yeah, it is just, I, I, I tell so many people that don't lock into the idea that Disney World is the only theme park out there. Great park. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it to people. But there is so much more out there as well. And I think if you're not at least looking at the other options out there, you know, you're, you're just cheating yourself because there are so many great experiences, not just in the United States, but around the world, too, particularly if you mm -hmm. live on the coast and you can get relatively cheap airfare when borders open up. I mean, uh, you can get cheaper airfare to go to Tokyo from L.A. than you can get to go to a lot of places within the United States sometimes. And to it, when you actually look into what they call they charge to go to Tokyo Disney. Mm -hmm. It's like half the price of going to Disney World, and they're oh, way wow. better parks. I mean, there, Tokyo Disneyland is like the best of Magic Kingdom and Disneyland put together. It's like you got the mm. Disneyland Pirates with the Magic Kingdom Haunted Mansion, but they do the Haunted Mansion Holiday Overlay on the Magic Kingdom version of, mm. of Mansion. It just it'll blow your mind. It is amazing. And, and then anyway, Disney Sea right D there. Disney Sea, which is the most beautiful park anywhere. And um Voyage to the Center of the Earth will blow your mind. Uh, they're putting in a big new expansion with a whole new port, which is, you know, their word for land, uh, that's coming up in a year or two. And it's just, you know, absolutely wonderful experience uh, to be able to go to Tokyo. And, and it's honestly not that far out of budget, particularly if you get used to, you know, kind of the ridiculous prices that, you know, a Walt Disney World vacation can be. You can stay at the, uh, the Hilton Tokyo Bay, which is on the monorail line for Tokyo Disney for like, you know, a little over a hundred bucks a night. And then you're paying like oh, 60 bucks a day for tickets to Tokyo mm -hmm. Disney. If you can get the airfare for like 700 bucks from LA to Tokyo, I, that's, that's cheaper than a Disney world vacation for a lot of people. So, I mean, it's sure I don't think people yeah. should automatically rule out international parks just because they're in the U S I mean, tons of great parks in the U S you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I try and do road trips every summer and hit up a bunch of them, but you know, international might not be as inaccessible as you think. Just, you know, go out and get that passport. And since, uh, you know, passport, you don't need the real ID thing anymore either. Oh, because yeah. The passport qualifies for that. So, mm -hmm. okay, something to consider. And so $60 a day, I had no idea they were like that cheap. Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on day and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's way cheaper than Disney World. Like, yeah, wow, that's almost... Almost just a gas tank, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that kind of asked my next question, which was your favorite international theme park. I'm going to assume it's Tokyo. <sighs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waffle on this one. Disney Sea is up there. It is really hard for me to decide because I've got three parks internationally that I absolutely love mm -hmm. and would love to get back to. And obviously, Tokyo Disney Sea is right there. Uh, but, you know, I can experience a lot of Disney here in the U.S., so it kind mm -hmm. of pushes that button. Two things that get at stuff you can't really get at the U.S. quite as much or at the same level. Uh, there's Efteling over in the Netherlands, which oh, is yes, kind of yes. out in the middle of the country, not really near any of the big cities, but mm -hmm. everything in the Netherlands is it's so compact. Uh, that's a great, great park. Um, it's celebrating, I think it's like 70th, 75th anniversary this year. Oh, wow. uh, it's been around a long time. The heart of it is this this huge kind of art installation where it's they've created these scenes that are like from 30 different fairy tales, wonderful sculptures oh. and art decoration. And it's this huge walkthrough attraction. But they've got amazing dark rides. They've got, uh, you know, they've got a trackless dark ride called Sabalica right at the heart of the park. Great roller coasters. Um, they've done a lot of really nice work there. Um, and so that's that's one. It's it's really a two day park. Um, I tried doing it one day and failed miserably. 
<laughs> so I mean, I want to get back and get that second day in. So uh, and just absolutely wonderful service and a, and a great place to visit. So Efteling in the, in the Netherlands is uh, up on top of my list with Tokyo Disney Sea. And the third one that I really love uh, is Warner Brothers World in Abu Dhabi. Um, ah, oh indoor, yes, indoor uh, theme park. The and Batman it's ride looks It's all the good. Warner Brothers animation franchises. Mm -hmm. You have DC Comics. You've got Looney Tunes. You also got Hanna Barbera. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've got my favorite interactive shooter ride anywhere in the world. It's called Ooh, Annie it? Mayhem. Mm -hmm. uh, the theme of it is it's the Acme Corporation warehouse. You know how Wile E. Coyote is all, 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 always ordering stuff from Acme. Yeah. It works. <laughs> so this is the factory where they build all that defensive <laughs> stuff. And your job is you've been hired to do inventory for the Acme Corporation. Um, so you've got to go through and that's your little, you've got your little clicker to like, you know, capture everything, but it's just, as I said, complete mayhem. It's animated mayhem, Annie mayhem. <laughs> um, but they've got so many great call outs to so many Looney Tunes cartoons in there. And at the very end, they physically recreated, if you remember any Looney Tunes, those, those red rings at the end of it were, you know, Porky. Oh Pan yeah. Is, that's all folks. And that's all practical. It's, you know, I mean, there's a lot of screen oh, wow. in it. That's an all practical set that they've set up for that it is mind blowing. And I love that. And then you've got all the DC stuff. You've got a great Batman ride. Uh, you got a good Superman ride, a really nice green lantern flying theater. That's actually one of my favorite kind of themed flying theater rides, but it's all just so well done. You think about an indoor theme park. You usually think about, you know, just you feel like you're walking through a Walmart or something and <laughs> some rides. Yeah. They've done so much good work in creating a complete atmosphere. The sky is right. All of the, you can't tell that you're inside. It feels like you're outside at a oh, specific wow. time of day. Just mm -hmm. uh, Dave Cobb and the crew at Thinkwell who, who designed that did such an amazing job with it that just the placemaking is so spectacular that it, and it's just so different from anything else that you can find somewhere. So, you know, that's, that's why I go to those three. Cause you've got, you've got the interior placemaking at Warner brothers world. You've got, you know, the, the best use of fairy tales and just classic amusement park at F lane. And you've just the actually jaw dropping gorgeous. When you have a blank check and you give it to Walt Disney Imagineering, and you get Tokyo Disney sea. Uh, so the, those are my top three internationally. Wow. Now, one of my other parks I want to go to is the Europa Park. Have you ever been there? Are you that is, that is number one on my bucket list that I haven't gotten to yet. And because everyone who says, uh, everyone who I talk about, about Eflin and say, well, have you done Europa Park yet? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I haven't. And they're like, you got to do Europa Park because that... Uh, Europa Park and F Lane is kind of a one two. They're not too far away from each other. You'd have to drive it because, you, know, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, you could do it with, you know, rail and buses and stuff, but, you know, rent a car, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, but uh, everyone says that's an, another absolutely lovely park. Uh, it is, if, it if you've ever cute. been on mock rides, uh, they do a lot of roller coasters and stuff. Around. This mm -hmm. is the mock family. They own uh, Europa Park. Yeah, so it's kind it. of like the demonstration for all mock rides yeah. at, uh, at Europa Park. And they've got some great stuff there. And I'm really looking forward. I was so disappointed that, uh, you know, a couple years ago, that was that was right on my list. I was going to get to it and I haven't been able to get close to it <laughs> Man, wow. Yeah, but yeah, it's really it seems really big too. Every time I look at a map or video, it seems like it seems like it's yeah, really and they, they, they've got that kind of Epcot look alike uh in the middle of yeah, the that, that that cool. it, yeah, it stops, but they have a roller coaster inside it, yeah, which is super cool too. So that's nice. Yeah, definitely. And what country was that in there? That's in Germany. Ruth's Germany. Germany. That's what I thought. I was like, man, I have got to get there one day. Uh yeah. I've the only international place I've been to was uh, Disneyland Paris, and that was cool. I was also yeah. Young. I like Disneyland but... Paris. I think I I think they've got a real. I, obviously, um, if you study Disney history, Phantom mm -hmm. Manor there is a must because mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that was going to go into um, uh, Western River Expedition that they had planned mm -hmm. for Walt Disney World got mm -hmm. canceled in favor of Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, that ended up making it into the back half of Phantom Manor, which starts out like 
like haunted mansion and then just takes a turn yeah, it just becomes was. this absolutely <laughs> spectacular yeah. western crazy dark ride and it's absolutely wonderful and the pirates of the caribbean there is just it's all scrambled again i mean so you think you expect what pirates of the caribbean is going to be no no you're going to mm-hmm. be surprised by this one so if you can't get out to the Shanghai one, which everyone says the absolute best parts in the world, you know, the, the Disneyland Paris one is a really nice change of pace on that. And the castle spectacular, particularly if you can go, oh, you, know, you go around the corner downstairs and you see the dragon at the bottom. Yeah. Of the I love that. Man, and also my favorite Thunder Mountain is there because I love it yeah. They're right in the middle of the island like that. That's super yeah. cool. Now I'm a huge Tom Sawyer Island fan, so I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will always be salty with the fact that I <laughs> took out Tom Sawyer Island there. Um, although everything you would find on Tom Sawyer Island is in a little uh, play area called Adventure Isle, just you know around the corner. Mm-hmm. But the idea that you're actually going underneath the river mm-hmm. at the start of Thunder and then at the end of Thunder yeah. as you get back to the station, because people don't remember, the station's actually on the mainland, yeah. and the roller coaster's on the island, so you got to get under that river to get over to the roller coaster, which yeah, is which like is a really neat uh, extra really bit of neat thrill, little, extra 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 ride time for the exactly. Disney fans who make it over to Paris. It's super unique, and they even changed this. Said I'm going to change the color of the trains and looks nice and green, interesting green color too. Um, oh, have you been to Universal Japan since you've been to Tokyo? I have. I've been, been to Tokyo. Close. I've been to all the Universal parks except Japan. Again, that was another one. It was on. It was on my 2020 to do list because I was going to get over for Super Nintendo World. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been friends with some of the people who are working over at uh, 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 Studios Japan for a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, haven't been able. Actually, Japan isn't letting anyone into the country. I mean, mm-hmm. you could, if you want to go pay the money, go get into Europe. Right? You cannot get in Japan. Uh, just forget about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I'm just waiting for them to open up the country over there again, so I can take a take a look at that. But uh, again, that's another one where you've got a lot of the stuff that's kind of blast from the past for Universal Studios fans. Mm-hmm. Want to go on Jaws the Ride? They've still got it. Um, I think they've still got yes. Terminator. I think they've still got Backdraft over there. They've <laughs> still got Shrek 4D. If anyone's if anyone happened to miss that over the last <laughs> 20 years, I don't think anyone did. But uh, all that stuff is still there. And in addition to Super Nintendo, in addition to uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, in addition and to the Flying the Dinosaur Minion Park, Flying Dinosaur, which is a great, great um, you know, B&M flyer roller coaster. People mm. love that. And uh, and they're getting Donkey Kong in a couple of years. So, yeah, there's yeah. that too. Like, that's super cool. Like, wow. They're like but, the greatest hits. Singapore is another good universal park. It's small, mm-hmm. uh, but it's in a really neat development there, uh, Resorts World Sentosa, and super easy to get to. Um, you know, and they've got a little, little not so really nice stuff there too. I I, I love the Battlestar Galactica coaster. I think mm-hmm. they've got the best version of Mummy there. Um, it really? doesn't have any of the Brendan Fra- Fraser overlay. Mm-hmm. It's 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 dark. I mean, it's what Mummy ought to be. It's the one that actually ends with, you know, spoiler alert, you're all dying. And, you know, uh, <laughs> which is, that's what it should be. You know, the Mummy shouldn't lose. The Mummy should win. Um, so, yeah, it should be because Mummy. Yeah, we'll, be yeah, we'll, we'll see if they make, because uh, they're changing up the Universal Studios Florida one. And, you know, there's a rumor out there that they're going to make it more like Singapore. And I am 100% Ooh, be nice. if, they do, if they go for it. Yeah, and the Singapore time. facade is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's made up to look like this huge Egyptian temple. You're talking thirty foot stone sculptures outside of the thing. It is Singapore. perfect. Singapore was a mummy. Let's see. Let's let's just let's show the people what this facade looks like. Oh, I see it. I see it. Hold on. Where is it at? Hold on. All right. Where is it? Boom, 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 boom. Share screen. Share screen. Boom. So it looks like it's this guy. There oh, you go. wow. That's very nice. It's massive. You, you see the little tiny people there? Yeah, they're tiny. And this is massive. Wow. Yeah, that is how you do a facade, folks. Yeah, and even the little marquee signs nicer than all of them, all the um, yeah. versions. Yeah, they're, they're, this person's like very and, tiny. And the way they've got the 
park laid out, you're going down the Hollywood Boulevard, which has a canopy over it, because uh, if you think Orlando is hot and humid, allow mm. me to introduce you to Singapore, <laughs> where July in Orlando is January in Singapore. Uh, torrential rain all the time. Uh, but, you know, it's just it, it's like for an hour and then it goes away. So they've got a nice canopy on their, their um, That's Boulevard. cute. But once you get to the end of Hollywood Boulevard and look across the little lagoon there, it's the, it's the temple for, um, for uh, Revenge of the Mummy. Yeah. So and you know, a really well laid out park. Like this picture almost looks a little scary. Like, man, I felt like as a little kid. Like I, I said, really it's, it's dark. It is, it is not the, oh yeah, I wish I'd got my coffee. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> I'm happy. It's, uh, you know, y'all going to die in here, people. You understand that? Yeah, definitely something that looks like intim very intimidating for our young children. Like, I kind of want that version here. Yeah, they they actually have a little kiddie ride next to it, um, <laughs> where it's just like this little Jeep ride that goes through, um, you know, this excavation or whatever. So you can tell your kids, oh, yeah, that, that's just nothing over here. Let's go. This is the mummy ride, really. Yeah, let's go on this. And you got your kid who's like four or five is going, I want to go back on the mummy ride. And then somebody else puts them on the real thing and they're scared for life. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so universal. So I love it. Man, that's that's a beautiful cue. That's incredible. So have you ever, are you planning to go to Beijing? Beijing, yeah. I mean, I would love to get back to that. Actually, I'm, I am kind of working to see if I can finagle a trip to China later this summer uh, for a variety of purposes that uh, should, if it comes through, I'll go to Shang, uh, Disney Shanghai and uh, Universal Beijing. Um, but um, yeah, that's not a done deal yet. Again, you have to have international borders open and everything. And mm -hmm. China, you need to get a visa, which is uh, uh, things can get a little tricky trying to get into uh, to China. Uh, but it's not nearly as easy as getting into Japan when uh, under nor normal circumstances. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, so oh, like, there's just so many cool places to visit. I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is. Like I, one of the things I, I forgot to mention about Warner Brothers World. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in a resort called Yaz Island, which is mm -hmm. literally like across the highway from the airport in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And it's right, it's, they've got, they're going to have three theme parks there on that. It's right next door to Ferrari World. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that what SeaWorld is? World's thing? fastest roller coaster. And they're putting in an indoor SeaWorld uh, yeah, that theme park really that's going to be open, I think, in a couple of years there. And just great hotel. They just opened up a Warner Brothers hotel right next to Warner Brothers World, like walking distance right there. No, oh, so it's very uh, heavily. And then you've mm -hmm. got the Formula One track there, uh, where they do the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix every year. Um, all right there, just that's super nice little, convenient. That's um, a resort a complex fun, over there. A lot of fun. Yeah. You don't even have to, another place you don't even have to really have a car. Well, it's kind of hot there, but as they theoretically, you wouldn't have to really have a car. No, no. I mean, you just pick up like a Uber or whatever the, the mm -hmm. Middle Eastern equivalent is that I'm blanking on the name right now. Uh, and yeah, you know, it's 10 minutes over there. You get to your hotel and they have shuttles that are running to everything. And they have a huge mall there, Yaz Mall. It's like one of the biggest malls in the world. Uh, so yeah, I, everything is designed to be indoor. I, if you're visiting during the winter months, it's lovely. Um, mm -hmm. It's relatively dry heat. You know, you're talking about 70s, 80s degree. I, oh, you beautiful. could be outside, go play golf, go to the, uh, the Yaz Water Park that they've got there. If you're there in the summer, everything is going to be indoors. But, you know, the only time you're really outside is going from the, the door of the hotel into the shuttle bus and then vice versa. Uh -huh. Yeah, that makes sense. So speaking of new, th all these theme parks, what's your most anticipated attraction that is scheduled for us to open up this year? It's not scheduled yet. If we get it, mm -hmm. my my number one is going to be Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood. Oh, I don't. I if I had to guess, I would say they're not going to make 2022 with that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I can't. They're, it, they're right not going to have it go for the summer. I don't think they're gonna, they would open it like during Halloween Horror Nights or, or, or holidays or something. I think that'll be early 2023. But if they do hustle and get that done, that's number one, no question at all. Uh, but of things that are actually announced for 2022, I got to go with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. Uh, yeah, that's, that looks that's like, mine too. Uh, it, it has the potential to be something really, truly fun. Uh, I've heard from some people who are, who are working on that. Uh, Disney's first reverse launch, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the story coaster there. So you've got, it's not really a spinning roller coaster per se mm -hmm. in terms of it just kind of angles. You towards like a, the it's like an Omnimover, like yeah. a Haunted Mansion. It's going to move and pivot so you can see things. And then just the whole idea that there's stuff to see. I mean, and yeah. I, I loved the, uh, the change that they made uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy in California Adventure. I love, love the it. music on that ride. Uh, and to bring yeah. that same vibe, the same, I mean, it's not going to be the same music, but to sing that same vibe with a lot of the same type of music, they're going to be on mm -hmm. there. So you've got the sights, you've got the sounds, you've got the experience. Um, all of the pieces are there for that to be a phenomenal attraction. Now, is it going to be better than like Velocicoaster or Hagrid's? I have no idea, but I'd be perfectly willing to collect some data and do some research <laughs> and find out. That's the hard work we've got to do. We're about we've got to go rides ride the rides. <laughs> yeah, 20 rides. And really, uh, I, I still yeah, have to we, collect my We still need to get more, more data on this. One more. You know? Let me go one, one more time. One more time. It's very I hard just need work. to make sure. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a really cool such a cool job right there. Do you know how fast, around how fast they might, they might be supposed to go? I don't remember the stats on it. I mean, it's not going to be like a record breaker in terms of speed or anything, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll, it'll go fast enough. Because the trouble with the with the story coaster thing, and this is the same thing with Hagrid's, is you can't go too fast because you've got to linger through the yeah, story. Yeah, because yeah, you'll miss the... The fact is that if you get, you feel like you're right down on ground level, you've got stuff close to you, it's going to feel a lot. I mean, 20 miles an hour feels a lot faster when you're right there on the ground and you've got something right by your face mm -hmm. with and by like that. That feels a lot faster than 80 miles an hour when you're 100 feet up at the air and there's nothing around you for reference. Exactly. Uh, yeah, one of the things that people, uh, you know, going back to Ferrari World, uh, we've got an on-ride video for, uh, for Formula Rosa, which is like mm -hmm. a one, 0 to 149 miles an hour mm -hmm. in like a couple of seconds. And, but it's really just it, that coaster, it launches from inside to outside and there's not a whole lot around it. Mm -hmm. um, because you got all the clearance issues and all this other stuff. So mm -hmm. it's hard for people visually to understand just how fast that coaster is going. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're riding it, you feel how fast that coaster oh, is going. Yeah. It's the only coaster I've been on where they make you put on goggles before yeah, you get so on the coaster <laughs> because the sand will blind you because uh, it is going at nearly 150 Ooh. miles an hour past you. Oh, wow. Um, so that's a completely visceral experience, but you if you're just looking, you don't understand the speed. You literally have to feel the wind with that. Uh, so something that uh, maybe you don't have quite that extreme wind, you don't really know how fast you're going if you don't have reference points. But something like Hagrid's, I mean, Hagrid's feels a lot faster to me than, uh, than I think it actually is because it's low to the ground. It's basically mm -hmm. a terrain coaster. You've got the show scenes going by. Um, you know, it just you know, feels so much faster because stuff is just flying by you. That makes yeah, that makes actually like a lot of sense. Um, like on same thing with a car and a, and a and a plane, kind of when you're driving past home, which is sure. stuff yeah. too. Yeah, I mean a car. Yeah, sixty miles an hour in a plane, you're you know you're like stalling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like you're not doing anything at all. <laughs> miles an hour in a car. Sixty miles an hour in a go kart. Try that sometime Ooh, where your wow. butt is basically right on the pavement. You think you are hauling <laughs> in one of those things? Yeah, uh, yeah. That? You get one of the, if you can get one of those ride alongs in like an open wheel race car. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, phew, yeah, you're going to be throwing up. It's uh, <laughs> super, 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 super fast. I mean, it's really different than having yourself up in that seat, even if like a little sports car versus, or, you know, for some people, the sports car versus like the minivan or the truck or something where you're mm -hmm. up higher and it just doesn't feel like you're going as fast. I mean, that's why yeah. that nice low to the ground seat. It makes you feel like you're going faster. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Um, Very interesting. Yeah, because. Yeah, on taller coasters, it could be going much faster, but you feel like you're just not going as fast as something like a yeah. like Terran or something, which is pretty. Yeah, I mean that's that's why I like coasters that uh, you know play with terrain, like some of the stuff at Dollywood. Um, and mm -hmm. they went through; they took out a bunch of the trees around uh, Lightning Rod, which I think was a little unfortunate. But uh, yeah, we've got things like trees, like like one of the my favorite effects is uh, at uh, Holiday World in indiana on uh, thunderbird there that little bit where you're going on the wing coaster through the woods and like 
everything is a head chopper because it's just <laughs> trees, 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 and you're on a wing coaster anyway, so you don't feel like you know, you're just at the side of the track and you mm -hmm. think, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm going super fast, and you're not going that fast, and you still have that feeling of if I put anything out, I will die here. Which, <laughs> that's where we ride this stuff, isn't it? Exactly. Oh man. So speaking of Disney's, what do you think about Disney's story living concept? Oh the second this attempt is... at celebration. I full disclosure here, I, I have family who live in celebration. I spend a lot of time in celebration, very familiar with it. Um also kind of follow the housing industry. I I followed a lot closely with Golden Oak and stuff. Uh, this is one of those things I really would like to get some more information about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Disney has the opportunity to do some really amazing, profoundly important stuff with this. But Disney also has the opportunity to just kind of pull off a lazy money grab here. And I don't know which way they're going to go. I have a suspicion where they're <laughs> going to go. But um, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, this country desperately needs a lot of new housing. We especially have in Southern California. California. Especially in Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about, mm -hmm. and there, uh, one of the big problems is local opposition to major new developments. Exactly. Every time those, somebody wants to go in and build a thousand there. new housing, all the NIMBYs say no. Mm -hmm. Disney could come in and put its name on a master planned community, and mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that a lot of the opposition would melt away if Disney had its name on it. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, is Dis what type of developments is Disney going to put its name on and what type of people are going to be able to buy into these developments? Um, something out in, you know, Palm Springs like that, I, you know, if it just ends up going to a whole bunch of investors mm -hmm. who turn them into Airbnbs for Coachella and Stagecoach and weekends during the winter, mm -hmm. That's not going to help any housing situation. Mm -hmm. not Disney at all. will make its money. That's fine. Uh, cash members will just kind of twiddle their thumbs during the, the summer <laughs> when nobody's out there. Um, but Disney will cash its checks. But if Disney used this actually as an opportunity to say, hey, you know, we're going to get behind uh, increased housing development in communities across the country. I mean, because they, they don't have to do something out like way in the far exurbs like this. Mm -hmm. I, they could find, you know, one of these transit oriented urban developments where they're trying to upzone an area, go into mm -hmm. some underused commercial area um, and use their clout to get approval for one of these developments that could really help the housing situation. Disney mm -hmm. could come in and say, you know, one of the things they did at Golden Oak was they put in the covenants that you can't rent these things out. If they don't want these to just be a bunch of Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. They can come in and say, you want to buy in story living? You want this to be the next chapter of your life? Well, you have to be living here. So we're not going to sell it to you unless you agree mm -hmm. to make this your permanent residence. They could do that. Will they? I don't know. <laughs> if they were to do stuff like that, mm -hmm. if they were to start getting behind really kind of creative, innovative developments and walkable transit oriented communities that we need in the US and use the Disney name to start getting approval for these things to go in and say, we're only going to sell it to people who agree to live here. Um, that could have a profound effect on, on the conversation about housing in the country. At the same time, if they're just licensing the name to master plan community developers and saying, you know, we'll give you some Imagineering help with the design. You pay us some money. We're not putting anything up front. We just get a cut of each house you sell, and you know, we get a, a maintenance contract on the club. Yeah, you know, they'll get a big payday, but they're not going to make any. They're not going to make any real impact on housing in America. So we'll see. Yeah, see, this is, is very interesting to me because see, I majored in urban studies and planning when I graduated mm -hmm. CSUN. So I was like, I hope. Uh, if it gets built, they have varying, uh, at least, you know, economic levels. So like, you know, yeah. lower income house, affordable housing, higher income. Um, and I know they have a section for 55 and older, but I was like, if they really want to get into like housing, I feel like, you know, a nice, like a tower, residential tower in Burbank or Hollywood, where most, some of the workers live, they can have like Absolutely. I mean, you don't need to look at residential real estate development as being 1950s style, you know, subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So much of what's interesting in housing today is, you know, 
the the one five the you know the, the people living on top of of commercial that you've got the exactly. tower development you've got the transit oriented development you've got walkable communities I and mean, that's kind of what they started to do with celebration was the idea that they wanted a denser community than what you typically had they just didn't go nearly far enough with it i mean mm -hmm. they've got the nice small yards there but it's still laid out like one of these you know, very 1980s type of master plan communities. They've got some nice trails and things around there, but it's not really a dense walkable community the way mm -hmm. that uh, that a lot of forward thinking developers are, are doing today. So Disney has the opportunity to do the original Epcot. They have the opportunity with this to create the real experimental prototype community of tomorrow mm -hmm. if they wanted to do that. But if all they're going to do is just license their name to housing developers to get a taste of the action on, um, you know, a bubbly housing market, you know, they'll get it. They'll make money off of it. They'll make a ton of money for Disney shareholders. It'll be a good business decision. But it's not going to be the kind of positive social impact that Disney could have that Disney honestly is one of the few players out there that has that ability to kind of move the conversation. So. I mm -hmm. really kind of hope that by people talking about this and saying, hey, Disney, you have the opportunity to do something really cool here, we might be able to get a little bit of influence to get them to say, hey, well, let's not just worry about you know, the Coachella Valleys of the world, but let's see what we can do in LA. Let's see what we can do in San Francisco. Yeah. Let's see what we can do in New York um, and you know, do something really cool here. You know, yeah, you know, and, you know, I guess it all depends on... Mr. Bob Chapex, the uh, um, decision. I know you made a video recently. I saw a short one about telling everyone to, you know, like, eh, no, 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 blame is not all on Bob Chapex. So, but what do you think about Bob Chapex in general as a CEO? Like, well, so far. He, he has the impossible position because he is, he is coming in after two all time Hall of Fame CEOs. Mm, that is Eisner true. And Iger were amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about some of the best CEOs in American corporate history. Um, that is tough. I, I, I ugh, that, that because you have to be that level not to look like a come down. And phew, wow, I mean, I feel for the guy on that because that's going to be super, super tough to do. Uh, you know, if you look at sports, say people who come in after Hall of Famers and they just get chewed up. Uh, so a lot of that's, uh, you know, Iger was getting chewed up when he came in immediately after Eisner, and he had to like lay down some authority to get that, uh, to get that criticism off. And this is this is Chapek's opportunity to do that. My mm -hmm. main point with all that stuff, though, is that hey, people, you've got alternatives. Um, I think it is a lot smarter for people to. I mean, if you're upset about what's happening with Disney, and there's a mm -hmm. lot that is upsetting about what's happening with Disney right now. Prices are high. Um, a lot, service can be confusing. You know, this, we're still not mm -hmm. out of the pandemic yet, uh, but there are a lot of uh, companies out there that are doing great work, absolutely great work. And I think the most effective thing that Disney fans who want Disney to change, the most effective thing they can do is go to Universal, go to Knott's, go to mm -hmm. Heffley, go to Warner Brothers, go to, uh, you know, go to one of these other parks uh, go to Cedar Point, go to some other uh, Bush Gardens, SeaWorld, go someplace else, uh, see what else is there, fall in love with some of the other great work that's being done around the country and the world. Disney's going to notice that. I mean, they don't care about people complaining, uh, you know, online. Complaining about I, the I, Guardians I, of the Galaxy ship support and over, no, over no, ship support. Please, please. <laughs> I mean, it was stupid. You know, I, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I, I, Chapek, um, I spent some time in Indiana. I have a master's degree from Indiana University. Mm -hmm. uh, Chapek's master's is from Indiana University. He's up from like Hammond, the district, uh, mm -hmm. uh, up there like south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. northwest Indiana. People mm -hmm. up there have been made fun of, abused. People have been talking dirt mm -hmm. about them their entire lives. If you grow up in the region, you get immune to criticism if you're going to survive. Bob Chapek does not care at all what anything <laughs> anyone says about him because he has been taking this type of abuse his entire life. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get under Chapek's skin ever. But what you can do 
is mess with his bottom line. And if you mm -hmm. mess with the balance sheet, and if all of a sudden you see Universal's attendance and revenue and profit are, are soaring and Disney's is stagnating, they're going to make changes. And they're going to look and see, well, what's Universal doing that we're not doing? Okay, they're lower. They've got you know lower prices. They've got more deals. They've got better hotel quality for the money. Uh, they're not messing around with you know they've got a simpler upcharge system. You know whatever. Uh, but if they see money moving, that's what's going to draw people's attention. So if you're just so wedded to Disney that you're not willing to consider <laughs> anything else, but you think that just yelling at Bob <laughs> will make something change, you're kidding yourself. Do yourself a favor. Go find something cool to do. And trust me, if you walk out the door, Disney's going to notice that eventually. That's mm -hmm. And it's also, I found a pretty amazing, I don't know, man, I, people I fight online about all these things. It's crazy how much I have so much time to do. So I'm like, man, I'm at work all Some day. Some people like time. fighting. Let's face it. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, you know our own little version of Fight Island here sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I, I, the trouble is, I, people who are fighting for fun and they know that they're fighting for fun mm -hmm. and they're fighting with people who know that they're fighting with fun. You be you. Go do your <laughs> thing. It's that people who get sucked into that and don't mm -hmm. realize that some people are just doing this for fun. And <laughs> they start taking it seriously. Somebody. They honestly start to feel bad. It's like <laughs> one of the great things about theme parks, themed entertainments, is this should feel good. You should enjoy this. This should be fun. If it's not fun, think about it and go find something that is fun because there's a ton out there that is fun right now. If something is not sure fun is. for you, Somebody else has got something that will and go do it. And, you know, that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. That's why so many of us are here drawing people's attention to all the cool stuff that's happening at various parks, various places around the world. It's not even in parks, too. I mean, a lot of museums, arts mm -hmm. institutions, a lot of places, they're all doing themed entertainment type stuff now. You can go exactly. fly, find flying theater attractions all over the country. They're in Vegas. They're in they're in. Mm -hmm. Pigeon Forge there in New York City. There's a big, mm -hmm. there's a flying theater attraction in New York City, for goodness sake, right now. In Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, this is all theme. You can do soaring over New York City if you didn't want to do soaring over California. It's there mm -hmm. right now. And it's done by the same people who all used to work for Disney on these projects, too. So it's not yeah, like it you're, you're going and getting some off brand stuff. I mean, a lot of the flyover <laughs> stuff is done by the, the same person who directed the original soaring over California. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the I Fly Soar America thing in, in Pigeon Forge is done by the same company that built the original Soar. I mean, uh, uh, Disney has talent everywhere in, in lots of different industries, lots of different attractions. Go enjoy them. Exactly. In Area 15 in Vegas, they just had an open that observation tower thing. That's pretty cool. Uh -huh. And uh, and also escape rooms. You know, those are great forms of themed entertainment that are pretty cheap. Uh, yeah, we found really everywhere. Uh, yeah. You're not claustrophobic, but Lots yeah. Stuff. And uh, so, a couple other questions here. Sure. Are you excited for, you know, like a rapid fire? Are you excited for Epic Universe? Why well, not rapid? Oh, fire. of course. <laughs> I mean, that's that. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that, that has the potential to be Universal's Tokyo Disney Sea. Mm -hmm. um, that do you I, think the concept of that is ridiculous? ridiculous and beautiful and i hope i hope it comes through the way we've we're, we're seeing it designed do you think that will be the thing the final or the thing that in some people's minds will just change their vacations from disney world to only universal instead of half and half or only disney when like do you think they'll start changing people's minds instead of mm, maybe a week at universe or disney world maybe we'll split it go, we go to universal or all of universal I don't know if it will will win mm. over Disney fans so much as I think it may create a bunch of new Universal fans, a bunch oh, of people yeah. who don't think that they're theme park fans. Mm -hmm. Because Universal has a lot of success with that. People who don't think they're theme park fans who think, oh, it's kitty rides and princesses and stuff like that. And you mm -hmm. go to Universal Orlando and all of a sudden you're like, I did not expect this. Uh, I had a completely different idea of what a theme park vacation was. And mm -hmm. you fall in love with it. And I think Epic Universe is the opportunity to take some of those, to, to, to create some of those new fans uh, for theme parks. So I think it can be more expansive than something that is just taking people away from Disney. I do think that it will, um, it already is encouraging Disney to think about what they need to do to counter that. Just like they, you know, we got the new Fantasyland and ultimately Pandora and Star Wars because of Harry Potter. Um, 
Disney's going to need to think of something that they want to position as their answer to Epic Universe. I mean, there's a lot happening at Disneyland right now. Obviously, it's across the country with the old Disneyland Forward idea of what they might do to expand those two parks. But Disney World is going to need something because um, Disney World doesn't like to take competition sitting down, do they? <laughs> they sure don't. And uh, yeah, what you said about those new fans, though, I actually horror nights with my friend. I went uh, last Absolutely. this year, and it was she. Well, she she says she she hates theme parks, but she goes to Six Flags. She likes Six Flags, but she doesn't like Universal too much, right? But she came out of horror nights since thank goodness the uh, Harry Potter was open for the first time because mm -hmm. it was her first time in that area, and she came off. The ride saying, hmm, we should come back here for a yeah. day. And I'm like, hmm, new fan, new fan. And you mm -hmm. said you hated it, and now you want to come back for a day, which might turn into an annual pass. And see, I see how they do that. Very That's smart. Um, and which one? Oh, the Star Cruiser going, staying in Orlando, but switching parts. See, are you excited for that? Are you going to attend a media event for that? Um, yeah. I, our, our, our Russell, Russell Meyer is covering that for us on Theme Park Insider. He is far more of a Star Wars fan than I am. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I deferred to Russell and his family. Uh, they're all going to go to this, and I, I cannot wait to hear his report. He is, he is a fabulous writer, a great photographer, a huge Star Wars fan, so I think he's going to do a great job covering that for us. Honestly, um, the idea of a two-day LARP adventure with Star Wars stresses me out a little bit <laughs> I, I like star wars I, i'm loving the stuff that dave filoni and uh uh the, the crew is doing on disney plus right now with the new series mm -hmm. uh but um yeah i just don't know about uh you know the the thing is i the thing i keep coming back to is the old adventurers club that they had at the old um you know pleasure island at walt disney world again mm -hmm. myself here <laughs> that was really kind of the first society of explorers and adventurers type thing that they did at, in, in Florida. And you had this kind of this cast of regulars that were there. And if you went in, it was all very role play stuff. And I went in a few times and I just couldn't get into it. But one of the things I realized is you had these regulars there that were so established mm -hmm. and it was kind of hard to fit into their vibe. And I think one of the things that might be cool about Star Cruiser is it's a whole new crew of people every two days. Mm -hmm. So there aren't any regulars there. Everybody else is figuring their way around it. It's a little bit more open. And I think that might make it a lot more accessible to people. Uh, so I thought about, okay, maybe I do want to do this. And I'm just like, oh no, Russell's got to do it because Russell's <laughs> going to be so into this. He's going to write something so cool. I want to read what Russell has to say about it. So I'm looking forward to next week when his uh, uh, his reports get on themeparkinsider.com because I think that's going to be a definite must read and must see for a lot of people. Yeah. When is it, when was it going to, as it, I assume what, March 1st is going to? Uh, uh, March 1st is the official opening day. They've got media events are happening next week. So um, now I so that's in the article be on your site on when that's coming out. But uh, uh, we should have that up as quickly as we possibly can. I think they're going to actually allow us to live stream some things as well. So oh wow! Website. So I'll be tuning in. Everyone else should tune in. Uh, wait, live stream where on your Facebook or on your uh, YouTube? I, yeah, it'll Facebook, YouTube, front page of the website. Wow. We'll we'll figure it out. I, that's 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 actually on my to do list for this weekend. Is figuring out yeah. how am I going to coordinate all this stuff? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, because I'm like I know you definitely have a Facebook and you definitely have a Twitter. So I was like, hmm, I guess I can live stream. Do you have an Instagram? You have an Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah TikTok. Yeah, we'll be everywhere. I have a TikTok. Wow. I did not know. I feel like that might be new. That new yeah. is not the right. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. I might possibly be the oldest person on TikTok. Uh, we've got, Trust we've me, like I know 20... my uh, grandma's on TikTok, so I don't right. think you're the oldest person. <laughs> but we've um, got some fun stuff on there. Yeah, about yeah, about 25k followers on that. But uh, yeah, it's growing. Pretty so good. Nice. Pretty good. So I was saying, I've actually have plenty of places to live stream from. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that'll be super exciting. I, can't wait to read. I can't wait to read all the reactions, especially you know after the videos they put out and the backlash, and, uh, and then there's people that are really excited. So I'm really excited to see like what the actual experience is, not based on the videos, but like based yeah, on some of the being in the there. Yeah, like mm. I was saying about some of the ride videos that you just where the speed doesn't translate. I mean, yeah. 
a, a lot of just the vibe of what this thing could be mm -hmm. might not translate to video because yeah, cinematography is important. You know, movie making is important. There are some skills to the way you hold a camera, you light a scene, you, you, you put people into frame that affects the emotion of something. And mm -hmm. if you're in that immersive experience, I mean, because you can go through, there are some great ride videos out there. There's some terrible ride videos mm -hmm. out there. And, but these are all situations where on a ride, they really are trying to control your point of view. So you don't have a whole lot of decisions about where you're going to be shooting on a ride video. Something like this, you've got an infinite number of decisions on how you could be doing things. So until the thing is fully operational, until the thing is fully immersive, you've got all the characters in there, all the lighting, all the scenes, it's impossible to judge how this thing is going to feel. And even when all that happens, if you're not the one there, you need somebody who's really good with a camera and can do some visual storytelling that gives mm -hmm. you a fair and accurate representation of what this experience is going to be like. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, that's why I'm hoping that, 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 that you know, we've got you know, great people like Russell and stuff out there who can really tell us what this experience is going to be like, as opposed to just the, you know, the Disney Parks blog thing where it wasn't complete. You were only yeah. a little bit of half of pictures of things and you couldn't possibly get an idea of what that full experience was going to be like. Exactly. And some things like the, the lightsaber thing, I mean, that's, I feel like you definitely have to like actually do that to really, like you said, experience how that actually, I, I feel like it gets really hard, even with a professional person. The whole, to really the whole idea with the, the lightsaber yeah. is the way it, it, it kind of feels in your hand. Yeah. You know, just the way that it's kind of you can't like initially resisting until you learn to go with it and everything. And that's not the experience you have with the lightsabers that they're selling right now. But yeah. that's supposed to be part of the experience. I mean, it's in the patent applications that they have, that there's some haptic feedback to this thing. And that's absolutely something you're only going to experience when you put it in your hand. Exactly. That's not something that's going to come across in a video unless it's a supremely talented filmmaker who's <laughs> really found a way to, to communicate that. But still, it's still even going to feel better when it's in your hand. Exactly, man. Well, I can't wait for those um, videos, uh, that article and live stream next week. And thank you so much for joining me on the channel. Still super excited. I got to interview you. Super cool. And hey. Thanks find for him me. Ah, and also keep in mind guys he like responded to my email like 24 <laughs> hours or less that's incredible <laughs> but like because I, I just imagine he was like a big theme park blog website and one of the first ones when i really started getting into theme parks one of the first ones i'd always read so i was like ah I should, he responded so fast like iconic <laughs> but you can follow him at themeparkinsider.com of course then on twitter facebook and TikTok and Instagram TikTok. on all those platforms. Be sure to I'll put all the links down below. And uh, of course, stay tuned for that Star Wars coverage. Is it sure good or bad going to be a hotly debated topic next Absolutely. week? Absolutely. <laughs> like, oh, I can't wait for that. And uh, if you liked this video, press that thumbs up. Subscribe for more theme park updates and cool videos like this. And have a great day.